Hi there, greetings, welcome friends, welcome. So um, today is April 13, and we just had a beautiful, sp very special holiday in the sky, the conjunction of Jupiter and Neptune in Pisces. And this constellation is going to be watching over the earth in the next coming 13 years so it's very very special and uh, we are now in the oversoul of that light that is that is giving umbrella over the earth and um, it is much my true pleasure to introduce to you my dear friend and soul sister parul agrawal and Parul has been my friend for years, even though it feels like she's been my friend for centuries. <laughs> like we have, we fought many battles, <laughs> arm to arm. <laughs> Someone, we concluded that we were in, in Lyrian worlds to get, Lyrian wars together. Do you remember Parul recently we, came, we put this together that we're in Lyria together. So Parul in this lifetime, in this lifetime, in, in the last lifetime in 3D, Parul has been an international best-selling author. She came to America and, you know, like many of us, who entered the, the matrix, we enjoyed junk food and all the restaurants and all the yumminess of pizzas and, you know, and, and dishes from all over the world and so on. And like many of us, we put on weight. Yes, Parul as well. And there was a moment in her life when she woke up and she realized, oh my goodness, if I, if I work as an, as an engineer for a corporation, I will be stuck in this cubicle and I'll just put on weight, put on weight and get sick and unhealthy. No, I need to choose. I need to do something. I need to choose a different life. And um, this is how Parul discovered juicing, fasting, cleansing. And she eventually she wrote a book, Juicing for Healthier Families. And and inside this membership program, you get this book as a gift from Parole, and you can download it. It has beautiful recipes for, for juicing for every single day with different benefits and so on. And after this, Parole has raised an army of, in, of best-selling authors. I think it's like what, 400 people already became best-selling authors through you? Yes, yes. Yeah. I, would, I would think that little over 400 by now. I yeah, so you can imagine. And all of these people are, are passionate about personal development, uh, spirituality, consciousness, health, wellness, and, uh, you know, green lifestyle. And it's all about, it's a crowd of people, starseeds like us, who are all about bringing knowledge, for the new earth and raising consciousness and so on. So after this service, Parul had another lifetime of being a business coach and business strategist. Yeah. Ready to start eating. And she is together with, with me now uh, co-creating different humanitarian projects. And we are very very excited about the possibility of being of service here to Gaia, to Mother Earth. And um, recently, recently, because this new light started to shine into our realm, this gorgeous sunlight br bringing high frequency light uh, from, uh, from our home, from our Central Celestial Sun of the Galaxy, different, different names for it. This love of Christ, high frequency light, love, love light is coming. So Parul, said, Parul has, has told me about sun gazing. And I know very little about sun gazing. 
and I'm very eager to, to learn from her today because it turns out that sun gazing is, is a part of, of Hindu spirituality and Vedic spirituality. So I thought there could be nobody better than to ask her about it. So Parul, I give you the mic and I'm, I'm, I'm all now learning from you, please. Thank you so much, Evita. You always make me feel so special and uh, wow. you know, powerful. Yeah, Mila. Uh, I, I, hi, Mila. So yeah, thank you so much. I, I'm not sure if I um, really deserve all that appreciation and recognition, but it's always, uh, you know, so good to hear it from you, especially. So thank you so much for um, giving me this opportunity to talk about sun gazing and sunbathing, basically how can we access the energy of sun and rise, you know, rise above our human limitations. And um, sun gazing, as you mentioned, or sun worship has been a part of my growing up when I was a little girl, my grandparents, uh, I used to live with, in a joint family with my parents, grandparents, you know, uncle, aunts, all of us living together. And my grandparents would wake up early in the morning uh, before sunrise, and they would take a water in a small pot, and then they would offer it to the sun, essentially, uh, during sunrise. And that was a sort of a part of my growing up. And then, um, we were not like forced to do it. We were not forced to do any of the rituals, but I was always very fascinated, uh, you know, uh, with the sun. And I feel that sun is such, a, was really my, is really my best friend. Then I grew up and I went for my higher education to Bombay, uh, which is sort of a big city. It's considered like a Bollywood uh, city of our country. So I was away from my home for the very first time uh, after 18 years of age. And um, I was very sad and depressed and uh, demotivated, uh, basically homesick. And at that point, again, I knew sun was the same entity. It exists at my hometown. It exists here. So I doing, started doing these sun prayers again. So I would, you know, follow the ritual that my grandparents would follow at home, wake up early in the morning before sunrise, uh, take water and then just offer to the sun. And um, after I started doing that, I felt at home because, you know, I, um, I felt that connection with my homeland, with my home country. And normally what happens when we are doing this sun gazing or sun prayers, we also say a prayer. So it's, it's called the Gayatri Mantra or the sun chanting or the mantras. It's like Om Suryaya Namha, Om Suryaya Namha. So which means I'm just praying to the sun, you know, the sun energy, the sun God, the sun in me, the sun in you. So I started chanting that mantra and I, it, it gave me instant power. So I failed, like uh, when I was in Bombay, I failed um, in my first year of engineering, which means like, you know, I was not able to get the marks that I was supposed to get. So I failed and I was not able to graduate and go to my second year. So once I started doing this sun meditation, I gained or regained my power back and um, I was able to study well. I had uh, this aura that... Uh, I could do everything. I felt powerful. And um, at that point, it did not make any sense to me. I did not give any thought to it. But now what happened recently, I started doing this sun prayers again. I've always done that off and on, off and on. But I started doing these sun prayers and sun meditation again because I feel very comfortable and calm when I'm sitting in under the sun and I started seeing these auras like beautiful lights coming from the sun and I wondered you know um, is it me or is everybody seeing these or is it my mind playing games with me and uh, then I started researching 
and I stumbled upon some channels and I stumbled upon some videos by chance, completely, you know, divine. And um, where I understood that actually people are doing sun gazing to increase the vibrations of the earth. And as we know that a lot of solar flares are coming into earth and people are doing sun gazing some people are doing it for seven to eight hours every day so that these solar flares intensify and we ascend sooner. And that was like so mind blowing for me because I was not doing it from the intention of maybe helping with ascension, helping with the movement, helping people get rid of COVID. I was doing it only because it seemed something that came natural to me and then I started researching more and I I realized you know um, how important it is to do sun gazing and how it can be the single most important thing that we can do to really ascend and have the lifestyle and the life that we need because think of it like sun has always been the greatest source of energy, right? I mean, if you look at uh, your history or if you look at the start of the earth, how earth started, it is also believed that earth was a part of sun. So basically the earth and all these galaxies came from the big solar sun, right? The big solar grand sun. And so it was a fragment of the sun that broke and then it created earth right or different planets basically the sun broke down into different planets so in that sense earth is a fragment of sun or earth is a part of sun right so how can we disconnect ourselves from our source we cannot right so because we are a soul, I mean, part of that source, that's why we feel so connected to the sun energy. And it completely makes sense because there have been so many studies coming out that places where we do not see sun for a longer period of time because of the winters or because of the rainy season, for example, in Portland, uh, which is, um, a state in west um, of United States in countries like Russia where the sun is limited people go into depression right and it's been it's been proven and now doctors are calling it seasonal depressions and this depression is because they're not able to connect to that source of energy forget countries like Russia, more and more people are now staying indoors. We work indoors, our offices uh, are uh, indoors. Most of the time, the offices have this black screen, so no sunlight could come in. You know, uh, we have these thick, thick curtains on our windows, so sunlight doesn't come in, right? So basically what is happening, we are this connecting ourselves from our source. And when I say we are disconnecting ourselves from our source, I'm actually saying we are disconnecting ourselves from the soul. Because it is believed when a person is born, now we know, we all know, we talk about mind, body, and soul, right? When a person is born, the soul of that person enters inside the body through the eyes and then it stays in the pineal gland till then and when the person dies the soul leaves the body through the eyes and it's so funny i was studying all this and my daughter who is four years old randomly asks me a question mommy when people die are their eyes open or are they closed 
and it made me into thinking and i'm like you know why are you asking such a question you know and then i realized i mean my daughter uh, stays with two other girls they are my cousin's daughter and um, uh, they were probably discussing something but it made me think i have seen in movies that usually what happens doctors come or somebody comes and then they close your eyes after you are dead so why do they close the eyes why are the eyes why eyes are not closed when you are dead because they are open and the soul leaves through the open eyes and once the soul leaves you know intuitively maybe the doctors or whoever is by your side when you die knows that the soul has left or the soul knows and then you shut down the eyes and if you think about it eyes are connected to the brain eyes is an extension of the brain right your uh, and that's how the soul enters your brain basically or soul and then sits in the pineal gland and what they are trying to do by telling us stay indoors don't go in the sun you know you will get uh, cancer if you go out in the sun or you will get some diseases if you go out in the sun they are connect they are disconnecting us from the source and they are disconnecting us from the soul because when we go out in the sun and when we look at the sun then what we are doing the photons from the sun or the sunlight they are entering our brain through our eyes and they are activating ending up into the pineal gland and they are activating our pineal gland so basically everything that they have done we know right from fluoride to disinfecting our water to creating this venom the whole idea is to disconnect our connection from the source and that is why they told us to stay away from the sun because it will give you cancer sunlight does not give you cancer as much as the sunscreen gives you cancer because they are thick products full of chemicals and now when you are putting all this sunscreen on your skin and you are going in the sun what are you doing you're just cooking all those chemicals on your skin and those chemicals enter your skin and create all this mess and toxins because skin is your biggest organ so skin is your biggest organ so whatever you are ingesting through the skin is directly entering your body right so basically it's not the sunlight that is creating that is harmful it's probably the sunscreen and why did they promote the sunscreen so at the end of the day they could make money right so now of course if you go out in the sun in midday and if you're looking at it there are some uv rays that you might have to avoid you know some ultraviolet rays but when we are doing this sun gazing and sun bathing i'll talk about the process in a minute you're not going out you know in the time periods when the uv light is maximum you're going early in the morning and in the evening when it when the uv light is in the safe time period like safe zone so basically they keep telling us do not look at the sun you will get blind till date there has only been one person and that was galileo who looked at the sun and we all know galileo was a scientist he was a crazy person maybe he was doing some experiment he did some experiment he looked at the sun and he turned blind however he was also like his blindness was also reversed but they are taking just this one study that if you look at the sun you will go blind and they have created like such a big issue out of it in fact the healing power from the sun is so beneficial that it could treat all your ailments it could reverse your diabetes it could reverse your cancer it could reverse any major diseases it could re reverse your eye health so you will not need glasses it will reverse all the eye. so the eye the eye reverse of eye age happens first and then eventually other things start happening and then finally you realize when you're looking at the sun 
for 15 minutes every day, your right brain and left brain are in complete alignment. You are in a state of total bliss. And at that time, you achieve enlightenment or attain nirvana. So basically, just by doing this simple ritual, you are able to attain enlightenment. You do not have to. I was talking to Avita yesterday. There is so much to study. There is so much to learn. There is so much to do. I feel overwhelmed. Plus, I have to take care of my house. I have to take care of my business. There is no time. But essentially, right now, it's not about knowing. You can know whatever you want to know. You could do a PhD in spirituality, but it's all about experiencing and reaching that state of nothingness and you can reach that state of nothingness by sun gazing because your right brain and left brain can come in complete alignment with each other okay so uh it's it's a so um and you know like uh when children are born we keep them in the sunlight so they get rid of their jaundice we keep them in the sunlight, you know, in uh, poor countries or third world countries, they say we keep them in the sunlight so they uh, develop their bones, so they don't develop rickets, right? Uh, during World War One, when U.S. and Korea were fighting, so what did the Korean government, no, I think the U.S. government, what they did, they, uh, as a punishment, as a punishment, they asked all the prisoners to stay in sun and gaze at the sun from morning till evening. So that was their punishment. And the US government thought that, oh, you know, <laughs> people will get really tired and they will die. These prisoners will die. Let's just put them in the sun. After three months, half of the prisoners got rid of their glasses. After six months, uh, uh, half of the prisoners got rid of their ailments. And by the time they were released, they were so healthy that they were thanking the U.S. government for keeping them in sun from morning till evening because they were now disease free. They were, you know, a new person altogether. So, you know, uh, it's funny. And if you look at it, you know, um, we are eating food, right? Why do we eat food? We eat food because we think that we'll get energy from the food, right? It will, when we eat food, the food gives us energy. But that is a secondary source of energy. What is the primary source of energy? It's the sunlight. Because how do plants grow? Through photosynthesis. How do photos, what is the process of photosynthesis? You know, the sunlight falls on plants and then they create this green color and then they get all the vitamins and minerals. So the primary source of energy is sunlight. The food is only a secondary source. So if sun can provide energy to the secondary source of food, which we eat and we feel that we have done something good to our bodies, why cannot we get our source of energy directly from the primary source, which is the sun? And it has been seen, documented by studies. So I will share a video. It is, uh, uh, let me check if I can, uh, Evita, can I like uh, share my screen? Can you make me like a post or something? Yeah, I can share it now. Thank you. So this person, his name is Hira Ratan Manik, and he just uh, passed away, I think, last, last year or something. He is a proponent of sun gazing. He was an experiment, basically. So he was studied at the University of Pennsylvania and NASA because after his retirement, um, he decided to do sun gazing. And his food intake reduced and then nasa started researching about him and they realized that this person now he's like i believe 85 in this video he doesn't eat he can go without food for 365 days 
and they studied him, they experimented him, they put all those wires around his, uh, uh, you know, head and st uh, stuff to study him, like, hey, is he getting uh, less energy? Is he mentally dissatisfied? I would share this video. I would highly recommend that you watch this video. It's a one, one and a half hour video, but highly, highly recommended. So they started researching him. But what happens is when we are eating food, we are getting the secondary source of energy. But at the same time, we are also getting like a lot of toxins in our body. But when we are getting this direct sunlight, sunlight is the only light which is not contaminated. You know, our food is contaminated, our water is contaminated, our air is contaminated. Sunlight, you could think of as one source which is not contaminated. So when we are getting this sunlight from the eyes, the first and foremost, we are creating vitamin A in the body. Vitamin A converts into beta carotene, which is great for the eye health. So the first difference you will see is in the eyes. But then when we are uh, firing these photons in the brain, what is happening? They are regenerating the cells. So instead of when we, when we are living a regular lifestyle, the cells die. But now when we are giving it sunlight and sun gazing, the cells rejuvenate. So we see people who sun gaze, they do not suffer from diseases like Parkinson's, Alzheimer's and stuff like that. Medical science says that you cannot regenerate your dead cells, but sun gazing is one activity that can not only regenerate, but it can give rebirth to new cells for health and rejuvenation. So not only you are sun gazing for your health, but you're also sun gazing to stay healthy longer. And also, I'm thinking what I wanted to talk about. Anyway, this thing will come back to my mind. Yes, hunger. So when we are fasting, let's say, we are forcing ourselves not to eat, you know, when we are doing spiritual fasting or fasting, you know, initially uh, we think, oh, I do not have to eat. But sometimes, you know, you end up into this cycle of not eating for a day. And then when you know, like you're off your fast, you end up eating more, right? So it's a vicious circle because you feel deprived. With sun gazing, because you're getting the energy directly from the source, you will realize within six months of time, your hunger goes away automatically. You don't feel as hungry as you were feeling. And any regime, be it juice detox, be it intermittent fasting, or be it just, you know, dry fasting becomes much more easy to handle. Because now you're not depriving your body. It's just that you're so energetic that you don't feel hungry at all. So it's also a natural way of getting rid of the false hunger. So basically, I just want to make sure, yeah. And at the end of the day, we all know that we are able to only use two or three percent of your brain power and the rest is dormant. Sun gazing is the only activity, one of the activities I would say, the most powerful and the fastest, which helps us to use our brain to 100% of its capacity. So now how do we do it? There are two ways essentially that we could get the energy from the sun. One is sunbathing and the other one is sun gazing. So what is sunbathing? So bathing with water, which we do every day, it's only one kind of bathing, right? Sunbathing is another kind of bathing where you're actually sitting in the sun and getting all this energy from the sun to cleanse your body. So if you remember, yes, exactly, exactly, Avita, you we had so much energy yesterday with because of sun gazing. Uh, so you know, um, when I was uh, when my son was born and when my daughter was born, I was using all these um, diapers, right, like the cloth diapers. And we would keep them, I would wash them, and I would put them in outside the sun to disinfect them, right? Because so that they do not have any poop and stuff like that. 
if you are if you have food lying in your house like maybe beans or rice or something and it gets infected by worms we put them outside in the sun to kill all the germs to kill all the bacteria so think about it the same way the same thing is acting on your body also sun is acting as a disinfectant and it is cleansing of you of all the germs that are accumulated in your body i want to share one video here and this girl explains it really nicely yeah i want to share this video here um are you able to see the screen Bathing that we do with water every day is just one type of bathing. It only cleans your external body. Sun bathing is essential for cleaning your internal body. When wheat or rice in our kitchen catches worms or starts to smell bad, we put it under the sun and it gets purified. Why? Because sunlight is a natural disinfectant. It detoxifies your body by removing the bad bacteria, molds, funguses that you might not even know exist inside. Secondly, sunlight is a powerful detoxifier. When sunlight falls on our skin, our skin feels a little warm. That is when sunlight is penetrating deep into your skin and reaching the blood passing through your arteries. And so your blood gets circulated. Blood that was previously hard and clogged up is put into motion. The toxins and impurities in your blood are also circulated and then finally excreted through sweat or urine. After sunbathing, most people's urine turns yellow. That's a sign of more toxins being released from the body. And no disease in the world can survive in a body that is clean internally. Sunbathing is also essential to maintain your skin health. In your skin, there are thousands of little pores per square inch. When these pores become closed because of dirt or any other matter, the waste can no longer exit the skin and it gives rise to many diseases. By giving them the light warmth of the sun, these pores are opened up and waste accumulated in these pores exits out through the skin. Combine everyday sunbathing with 16-hour fasting, enema, wet pack, and proper diet, which we talked about in the previous videos. And so you see, um, so you see how we can actually cleanse our body not just externally but also internally. Cleanse our blood; all the impurities can uh, be out of our system through sunbathing. So how do we do sunbathing? She covers in her video later. So what we do, we sit in the sun outside, of course, minimal clothes. If you, do, if you are in a beach, of course, you cannot be naked all the time. So you could wear like light clothes, white color clothes, because, you know, white color um, is very calming. It's very healing and it can absorb the sunlight really well. So either white color clothes, bare minimum, thin cotton clothes, not synthetic or polyester, thin cotton clothes. You lie down in the sun 15 minutes on your front and 15 minutes on your back. And do this every day. And you know how it's like a deja vu kind of an experience. I remember when I was a little girl and uh, uh, my periods first started um, uh, back home when I was like maybe 13 or so. Intuitively, I know I knew I, I would get all this period pains and stuff like that. And intuitively, I would know that if I go and lie down in the sun, my back pain would go. So I would do that, you know, uh, especially during this uh, winter months, I would do that and just lie down in the sun outside uh, without taking any medicine and the body would heal itself. Be, uh, uh, you know, better than... Uh, because what is a medicine doing essentially? Medicine is just uh, uh, kind of thinning your blood and it's sending this signal to the brain that, hey, you know, it's kind of a receptor. It's giving the signal to the brain that there is no pain. So likewise, you know, the sun is directly giving the signal to the brain that the body is healing, right? So, uh, uh, if you have osteoporosis, if you have any knee issues, if you have any pain, 
you know, just go and sit in the sun with the intention that the sun is healing that part of your body and you will see major changes in the pain without taking any external medication. So Mila, you had any questions? No, I uh, I only want just to confirm the same thing. I have done this without knowing uh, with my periods too, because they were very heavy. Uh, uh, the pain was very, very heavy. And I just did it uh, uh, one time when I was, because they came for, uh, to me 11 years, uh, when I was 11 years. And I did this, I went because I had uh, the parents of my house is a, a private house. We say just, uh, uh, we have a garden and everything there. And I went to the sun. I, I didn't know, but I just fell asleep there in the sun. And it was just like magic because after I wake up, for some minutes, I didn't have any pain, but the pain was awful only because of the sun. I, I felt that I had, it's better to go there. And only this, just to confirm that this is true. It happens to me too. Yes, exactly. And you know, um, the, uh, every time I fall sick, like uh, I fall sick mainly in December and January because it's so cold and we don't see sun for a lot of days. And I live in a very sunny area, like I live in the desert area, and I don't know like how people survive in places where there is no sun, really. No, uh, uh, it, it's, it's really, they get into depression all of a sudden. So uh, yeah, so that is one, uh, uh, one way to get sun. The other way, and which is obviously the most magical way, is sun gazing. So what is sun gazing? Sun gazing is basically looking directly into the sun with your open eyes, okay? So when do you do that? So in the first hour of sunrise and in the last hour of sunset, sun is not that harsh, right? It's not very harsh. So you can actually look directly into the sun and, um, to get all the energy from the sun. So how do we do that? So there is a way to do that. You have to stand straight, as straight as you can, like I'm standing right now, and look directly into the sun. And uh, with obviously eyes have to be open, okay? And it might, it might sound odd um, uh, to people, um, like, hey, how can I look directly into the sun? Am I not getting UV light and all these things? But think about it. The UV is maximum between, like, noon to four kind of a time frame, right, where sun is at its peak. But it's not there. So the, the UV has a percentage, right? So 2%, 3%, 4%. So during the morning time and the evening time, it's not... Uh, it's like less than 2% and it's not going to harm you. You're not even, it's, it's so little that you uh, cannot even tan your skin, essentially. So yeah, just go ahead and do it during the first two hours. Uh, I am now uh, able to look at the sun even during uh, the hours when it's really bright because, you know, your eyes and your brain just get used to it. But you start with, the morning time or the evening time if you can stand great if you that's the best way to get it because then what is happening the light is coming directly uh, through your eyes it's entering your chakras and then all the chakras are aligned if you look at that gentleman um, i showed you in the last video um, you see he is like 85 and he's standing so straight I'm like only 42 and I still cannot stand so straight because, you know, uh, and he was like, stand like this uh, while we are doing um, uh, the sun gazing. And this lecture is almost like how long? Um, one hour, 50 minutes almost. Um, and throughout the lecture, this gentleman is only standing like this without slouching his back or anything, right? <laughs> and it, it's so surprising. And he's just talking, standing like this without doing anything B uh, because he's so energized and he's so straight. Um, so start with that and start, um, uh, 
with 10, 10 seconds, you know, only 10 seconds uh, in a day, if you cannot do it uh, for longer, start with 10 seconds. So by the end of three months, if you do it regularly, 10 seconds, keep increasing the seconds every day. So first day you do 10 seconds, second day you do 20 seconds, third day you do 30 seconds. By the end of three months, you will see that you are able to do sun gazing for uh, completely 15 minutes. You know, of course, if you can start with 15 minutes, great. But again, you know, sun is considered one of the prime sources. You, some people in my culture, we call it sun god. So God doesn't want us, you know, to, um, uh, you know, God doesn't want us to feel any sort of discomfort, right? So this is the only practice essentially, which is not bound by any religion, not bound by any, you know, limitations. Uh, you could do it like, you know, in the morning, in the evening, standing is best, sitting, even some people can do it lying down if they're not able to sit or stand. So basically no rules. It's just getting that energy from the sun. And um, 15 minutes, yes, you could do it nonstop. You are allowed to blink your eyes, even for 10, within 10 seconds also, if you want to blink your eyes, you blink your eyes. But if you could do it at a stretch for 15 minutes, that's best, ideally. And what you will see, the first benefit that you will see uh, after three months is that your eyesight will get better. So make sure that if you're wearing glasses, you go and get your eyesight rechecked because you might have to change your number. Because I, as I mentioned earlier, it's creating vitamin A, it's a direct source of vitamin A, and your eyes are absorbing the vitamin A, converting it into the source which is actually required for eye health. So make sure, but do not <laughs> tell the doctor that you're sun gazing because then the doctor will be like, hey, you know, you're looking at the sun, no good for your health, so don't do that. But uh, definitely uh, go out there and um, get a, a eye test done if you are wearing any glasses. I what I am realizing with me, I don't wear glasses. I had my LASIK done. I would think like twelve years back or something. And now what I'm trying, what I'm realizing is that I'm able to see uh certain colors and lights which was which i was not able to see in the past so my eye health my eyes are okay after lasik so they are not like weak or anything but the other day when i was driving i could actually see the light from the cars usually it's just a light and you just see that the light is coming from the car uh, from the opposite direction i could see it like a huge ray of light going from up to down so, you know, you, your eyes become so sensitive that you can actually see different rays of colors and light as well. And um, uh, let me see one. I wanted to share something. It's a beautiful picture, which I found actually, uh, surprisingly, I found this channel, Patriot channel, which, um, and these people are actually, um, Uh, doing sun gazing uh, for world peace. So it's not just beneficial to us, but it's also helping uh, people with world peace. All right, so let's go here. So uh, recently you might have heard that a lot of different kind of light therapies have become really popular, right? I mean, people say, go and sit in the infrared light and you will feel good or you know uh, use sort of a red light to heal cancer or blue light to heal certain depressions and ailments so they keep coming out with this light and sound therapies even the bed beds is kind of uh, based on these light and sound therapies right but think about it the grandson has all the different kind of lights it's just that we are not sensitive enough to look it from our naked eye right so it has the infrared light in it it has the uv light in it it has the healing light in it so we will not need all these light therapies to heal ourselves if we just go and sit out in the sun 
So I wanted to share this uh, beautiful pictures that I saw on the Telegram channel. So let's see. So what they are say saying here is this is the light of the cosmos. Okay, let's see if I'm going back a little bit, right? These, this is your eye, okay? Can you still see the screen? Yeah. Are you able to? Okay, okay. So this is your eye, you know? So these are the beautiful colors in your eye. Of course, we are not able to see this color, but think of it as a cosmos, right? So these are the different colors in your eye. And these are the different colors from coming from the sun. So optical light is like this. The infrared is this. The ultraviolet light looks like this. The other light. So imagine all the colors that are the cosmic colors and that are the colors that your eye can perceive are coming from the grand central sun. So all you have to do is you have to gaze at the sun to get all those light energy and light therapy inside your body. This is just some random So essentially, after a three month period, you will see that your eye health, yes, exactly with a free medicine. So after a three month period, you will see that your eye health is improved. So that is like the first benefit that people experience, you know, people who are starting doing this sun gazing for the very first time. Within the six month period, you will see that your body aches have reduced. You are able to think better, especially for the children. You know, uh, even for us, you know, we are uh, in front of computers all day long. We are getting all this EMF and different kind of uh, toxins coming out from the computer screen. Go out in the sun. First thing in the morning, you are creating all these good hormones in your body, which are working throughout the day in your body. And at night, they are releasing melatonin. So you're sleeping better at night without the need of any external melatonin or sleeping pills or sleeping you know, drops. Because when you have serotonin, which is coming directly from the sun, it's creating melatonin in the evening. You sleep well, you sleep healthy, and you sleep less because now you're not having that distracted sleep, right? <laughs> you even if you sleep for four hours or five hours, but if it is a restful sleep, you feel rejuvenated all day long. So within six months, you will see feel that your sleep cycle is better. And because your sleep cycle is better, you're able to think better because now you're not foggy all the time. You're not, uh, you know, uh, looking for that cup of coffee all the time. So you're 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 more awake. And once you are more awake you are basically able to um, uh, balance, as Evita says, balance your hormones, balance different things in your body. And then within one year, uh, you will see that um, you have all these amazing powers and you're able to use your brain to the fullest of its capacity. You're not that hungry because imagine, right? Um, uh, but animals hibernate for six months, right? Uh, most of like turtle, they eat one time a day or maybe two times a day. They eat lettuce, then they hibernate for three months, four months, six months, and they live for thousands of years. We human beings, we eat three times a day and we live less than 100 years of age. Why? Because all this food that we are eating, <laughs> we are not even able to use it for our own energy. So you might realize that when you get this light from the sun, you're able to hibernate and go without food. Uh, this gentleman, uh, he was saying that one lady went without food for 12 years. Because, you know, uh, and even in Bible, it is said that somebody went without food. And what is food? Food is energy at the end of the day. Yes, we have our taste buds. We feel good. 
but taste buds is also such a funny thing taste buds are only on the tip of your tongue only on the tip right if you eat something and if you put it like uh, and, uh, you know behind the tip you will not get any taste from any food water drink or anything right so if you like you know i did one time an experiment and i ate all this uh, chocolates and stuff and i put it like behind my tongue my tongue is really long so i kept it like behind my uh, taste bud and i'm like oh you know it doesn't taste anything it doesn't really taste anything so why would i eat this when it doesn't taste it's only like the tip of the tongue that you're trying to gratify like instant gratification really so uh, you will realize by the end of the year you are so energized that you might go into hibernation uh, for uh, Uh, for a period of time who knows like maybe a month maybe two months so uh, because you have so much energy that you do not feel like eating food and that's what animals do they eat, take all their energy for six months and for the next six months they hibernate how can they live like if we are all mammals how can some some of these mammals and reptiles and stuff they live or survive for so long because you know they are eating less and living more we are eating more and living less <laughs> yes pranic nutrition exactly we have heard about like the daniel fasting where jesus also uh, fasted for 14 days and they get got a lot of light from the sun so if you're doing it if you're doing the sun gazing during the safe periods you do not even have to worry about the uv light or any other harmful light coming from the sun and uh, uh, truly i mean there are lots of other benefits and these two are just one you know one part of it you can also sun charge your water and you could also sun charge your food so you could leave water and i did that uh, one time and again you know most of the things that come to me are intuitively i had no idea why i was doing this i i took glass jars and i uh, took like green color glass jars and this is again uh, light therapy healing water healing so you take different color of bottles green blue and you fill them with just water whatever water you are drinking and you keep it out in the sunlight from morning till evening and then bring the water bottle inside uh, in the evening and drink that water within 24 hours because it's sun charged now it's sun charged water right so you drink that water and uh, it, that water becomes like pranic water and it is healing your ailments so one time you know i have always suffered from like constipation and intestinal issues so one time i intuitively uh, thought okay maybe i should drink sun charged water and i kept it in a green water bottle green bottle and i kept it outside because green absorbs i i just thought okay you know Uh, plants create photosynthesis photosynthesis is green color so maybe i should use green water bottle and i kept it outside and my system started digesting food better you know so so many things we know intuitively but we just cannot prove them scientifically so we just always our mind always looks for logic so we have to you know uh, come beyond logic some of these things have not been proven that lady who was uh, uh yes evita yeah i mean i just wanted to butt in uh, parol you mentioned that they were not proven right think about it friends who on earth would sponsor research like this who yes <laughs> okay yes. you know what i mean and who, in whose interest would it be of of course pharmaceutical industry is not going to sponsor research on the benefits of sun free energy free free food free medicine industries would collapse i mean what parul is sharing here is subverting in industries it's like pulling the the carpet from the table you know after couple industries already food industry right medicine pharmaceutical medicine and also the whole industry of energy drinks right and tobacco and because people smoke tobacco because they they need fire and fire is that energy from the sun yeah parul i want i have a question to you i remember there was a time when you discovered you told me you found a gentleman who 
did a lot of research on the sun and he he was living in a camper van because the scientific community casted him away do you remember and he was observing yeah. the, the sun and so on and what did he say he said that the sun is actually a portal correct it is hollow, it is hollow and it is actually a portal this is what i remember it, is that correct yes right yes interesting and do you remember he said that the sun will stop in 2020 correct yes right and from and that, that time like 10 years back or something right he, uh, very yes. old people, yeah. he did observations on the sun and to, i mean the guy is, is broke right because the scientific community casted him away banned him completely but he was so precise and he said listen our sun is going to stop in 2020 and i remember you contacted me with this said, look at vira there's a scientist and so on and he's he says the sun is actually a hole in our realm it's a portal into other dimensions and then parul do you remember this that when last year 2021 we we were like what is going on it's like we have a completely different sunlight in our realm like the sun is so white so bright and it's getting brighter and whiter and like more diamondy now and in the same time when you look at when you look at those hours of sunrise sunset if you parul taught me that when you look towards the sun you can actually see beautiful hue of pink blue and violet like indigo lights and your daughter who i believe is telepathic basically she she can hear what you're thinking about and that's why she's talking like this you know she can he pick up your thoughts and she answers your questions like mom by the way <laughs> mom dead people when they die do they die with their eyes open sure because mom was researching and thinking about the eyes and so on so kuhu asked more questions mom ask yourself this <laughs> yeah but uh, you said that your daughter drew these colors of pink blue and and violet right I, I can't, we can't hear you, Parol. Yes, yes. I mean, before when I looked into the sun at sunset and sunrise, I could see the sun was orange or red, sometimes, you know, red. I never saw such beautiful sunlight. I mean, seriously, friends, go to, to see the sunset and you'll be like, wow, it's gorgeous. It's like pink, bluish, indigo light. Just absolutely like higher, higher realms. It's those higher chakras are, are, are now given to us. Yes, Just, I wanted to show you like, um, uh, there is this lady, um, as I was researching, I found this lady also. And uh, uh, earlier I was not able to explain like what colors I'm seeing, right? Uh, remember, um, I was like, oh, you know, these are the colors I can see, but I cannot explain. So let me see if I can uh, get some pictures. They are on my phone. Let's see. Okay. Yeah, look at this. Can you see this picture right here? Wow. And this is, these are the beautiful colors that are coming from the sun. Somehow she's able to anchor and get this camera. I mean, we can see, Avita and I can see all these colors with our naked eyes. But no, you can happens? see them. I cannot see like that. You can see like this, orbs like this coming? Yes, I can see these colors, yes. Wow. I can see all these colors, you know. Uh, you see, I think that, Parol, you can see them because you have a tradition and practice of sun gazing. So your eyes are already like sharpened, you know, calibrated. Yes. And for me, this is so new that, you know, I keep, I woke up yesterday. Okay, Eva, get up, 6 a.m., get up. Okay, sunrise. And then, oh, it's not yet, go to sleep. Okay, 6.15, is it, is it up yet? Not ready, 6.30. <laughs> 
So then finally 6.30, I stand on my balcony and I gaze. And then I was so amazed. I had so much energy and such a peaceful, joyful mood. I mean, when you think about it, how many people, how many families are on the brink of divorce? How many of marriages are on the brink of divorce fighting over stupid things? Maybe people are just missing sunlight. Exactly. And that's the reason, you know, and what do they do? I mean, they just keep us indoors all the time. Look, yeah, especially you know, during COVID, right? Exactly. And then uh, uh, you see here, it's so, so beautiful. It's so dark and this lady and that. So I started researching and then I'm like, you know, somehow I stumbled upon this lady on Twitter. I have no, I had no idea who this lady was, but she was posting these pictures and I'm like, yes, you know, these are the lights that I see. And she's also seeing these plus posting them. And she's writing like, these are the crystalline frequencies, uh, you know, uh, coming from the sun. Wow. So, so, uh, so then I reached out to her on Twitter and I'm like, you know, um, I would love uh, to chat with you because uh, you see the same things that I see and <laughs> you know so far I've not been able to explain what I'm seeing to anybody because how can I explain oh, seeing all these colors people will be like oh yeah it's it's reg normal because you know the sunlight is splitting itself into seven colors and that's what you are seeing right and I'm like you know yes you're right in a way but it's something beyond that you know rainbow uh, colors and stuff it's something very divine yes and uh, <laughs> so luckily i found her so it's beautiful i mean such a simple practice again anybody could do it everybody is connected with the source and uh, we could all gain from this free source of energy nice. if you have any questions let me know um i was just checking my notes if i have anything missing here Amazing. Yeah. I hear that children, psychic children, and just many children are seeing these orbs now coming from the sun. And they're like, you, well, like what you said, just pinkish, bluish, rainbowish, and so on. And, and many kids are saying dragons are coming. That those are like friends and protectors of the earth and so on. I mean, just we are entering such fairy tale, such an amazing time. Absolutely, absolutely, yes. So wow. uh, you know, um, I can share these links for these two videos. Thank you so much. Thank you, and, uh, I, Parul. I also remember, you know, Alex Collier. Do you remember Alex Collier, who, who had, who claims to have contact contact with Andromedans? He says that that they told him that that high frequency light is coming to our realm through the sun that the sun is that portal through which that light that is causing the ascension that our dna activation all that freedom on the earth and all of this and i think the sun is connected directly with our consciousness isn't it yes Yes, that is what I was talking about because you know the uh, uh, soul enters your eyes, uh, soul enters your system through your eyes, right? And the only way to uh, keep it rejuvenated and keep it active and decalcify it is through the sun energy because essentially it's the sun energy. And that's why because so much light is coming down right now, that's why they keep spraying it with the chemtrails or they keep spraying it is it like my thing that is creating this clanking noise or i'm not sure what but and I that's why they, yeah and that's why they keep spraying the sun or the sky with all these uh, chemtrails and chemicals because they do not want us to elevate essentially because all these frequencies that are coming from the sun are so powerful that they will really, you know, awaken us hmm. if, we, if we know how to. It's you know, almost like battery, right? Because human body is like a battery, human brain, the nervous system. In, in Matrix, Morpheus is showing the battery to Neo, right? <laughs> like Neo, they want to turn you into a battery. 
And like, if we are like a battery or if our, if, you know, in, in the course of miracles, they say that human body is like a cell phone, but we are not the human body, the spirit, our soul is, is, is a spirit, but our soul ha has a human body as a communication device, right? An avatar. So in, in order to charge our cell phone, what do we need to do? Now we, need, now we know, we need to plug into the sun. Yes, and uh, it's so funny. Um, like a charger. <laughs> uh, the gentleman, the Hiramanik, was saying that uh, he, he, he created this term and he's saying that brain is the most powerful computer, right? So he created this term and he's saying that uh, forget the computer, we'll be not using it anymore in the coming years. All, we'll, all, all we need is the brainator. I think he termed it brain and computer, he mixed those two words and he's calling it brain -ter, brain neuter, like instead of computer, brain neuter. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, then we could communicate telepathically, we'll have the intelligence uh, of the computer, we will not need a computer. And it's so funny you're talking about avatar. This morning I was listening to Michael and he was also, do you remember he was saying, oh, do you like my avatar? I chose this avatar to be on the yes. earth. You know, do you like it? I'm like, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's so funny, no? You know what you're talking about. So yes, yeah, so you know, who knows? We might not need those computers because our human brain is way more powerful. And we use sun energy to charge those fuel cells or to charge those you know, battery operated cars and stuff like the Tesla cars these days. So why can't we use the sun energy to charge us? Because essentially at the end of the body, we are only positive and negative ions, right? And our whole body is water. 70% of our body is water and electricity, right? That's why we shut down when the electric grid shuts down of the earth, of the planet, because we are electricity inside us, right? So the best way to charge us is through solar charge, solar mm. energy. Amazing. You know, it just came to me as an idea because I don't have any colorful bottles. Yeah. And because I'm traveling, I'm not going to be buying any stuff. But I think that I could take glass jars, like seven glass jars, and color them or not color them, or just basically put marker on them, red, you know, um, or, or paint them or, or put a color or a sticker, or write red, orange, right? Yellow, blue, or maybe root chakra, sacred chakra, right? Like just intention, intention, because what matters is intention, right? And then have the, <laughs> as the child, the, have the sun charge them. Farul, you are giving us another job to do. <laughs> I just realized we have one more thing to do. Today I played water to music with this boom box. <laughs> now I'm going to play, now I'm going to charge water in, in front of the sunshine. <laughs> okay. Next week we do research on fire or on, uh, on soil or something. Hold on. Can't hear you. Can't hear you. Sorry, I was on mute. Yes. What I'm saying, it's like those holograms that King Smarty makes, right? So we could have all the colors in one hologram, kind of, you know, print it out and put the water on it uh, with the intention of charging it, you know, rather than having it in different bottles or different. So just put one bottle. Mm. Hologram uh, with different colors. Uh, okay. Rainbow. Basically. Exactly. Boom. The rainbow. Yeah, and yeah, we just need to make sure it's not from Apple logo yes. <laughs> or from, from the flag of you know what, because <laughs> that's that rainbow is upside down. Yeah, right. <laughs> Something yeah. fun. Interesting, huh? And can you imagine the entire time the sun has been available to us for free? I know. It's like, I mean, Parul, you know, this is like, for you, maybe for you, this is such a natural thing because it's so close to your culture. You guys did this in your home, you know? When I lived in Asia, I could notice that even in Thailand, 
people have so many practices that they just do it like automatically because their forefathers did it. They, you know, it's like like a lifestyle. They don't even think about it. They don't know science behind it. Yes, they. But it's so harmonious in with nature as long as they are not eating from plastic, right? But it's just so everything would be so was so logical there when I could see why they were doing this. And, you know, people in the West, the further you go West, we just forgot so much, like we lost our common sense. I mean, we, we keep buying stuff, we keep paying for things, you know, all this wisdom, all this, all this wealth is available for us for free if we just return to nature. Because the mother, mother is going to feed us and protect us and take care of us. Exactly. And if you look at it, you know, in the Ayurveda system of diet, you know, people who follow the Ayurveda, the uh, uh, Ayurveda says that do not eat after sunset. Okay, we are not supposed to eat anything. We can put liquid in our mouth, but we are not supposed to put solid in our mouth after sunset. Wow. So this we eat only from sunrise to sunset. And why do they say that? With your uh, biggest meal being the lunch. That is what we say in Ayurveda. Yeah. Why? Because we need digestive fire to digest the food, the Agni. And Agni increases with the increasing sun and decreases with the sun going down. Mm. So Agni is maximum when the sun is at peak. So our digestive mm. fire is maximum when the sun is at peak between 12 to 4. And then when after the sun sets, there is no Agni or fire to digest the food. So, you know, my grandparents never ate after five ever. And it was like very natural for them because, you know, it's the sun has set. And in many practices, it's like, oh, sun has set, we will not eat, you know. Even if they forget eating in the morning after sunset, they won't eat. They're like, okay, they, now India is very big on drinking milk. So they might drink some milk or they might drink, you know, some tea and stuff, but that's it. And it makes complete sense because now there is no digestive fire to digest the food. And what we did, we put everybody in the cubicles. We forced them to work from sunrise to sunset. And they started eating only after sunset. And that's when we started having all these issues with the digestion. All the diseases. You know, the IBS and celiac and stuff like that. I mean, now I feel that our human body it's the power of intention, right? I mean, you have seen all on America's Got Talent or all these shows. People can eat blades, people can eat rocks, people can eat anything because they have that intention and the blade is not cutting their intestines and stuff. They can eat fire. It's all our power of the mind. So food cannot really harm us until and unless if we follow the pattern of the sun, and if we have that intention that it's not harming, it's helping us. No, so, so, but what we did, we changed the life cycle, right? We changed everything. Instead of eating from sunrise to sunset, now we only start eating at 7 p.m. at night and we eat till 11 p.m. or midnight. And then we go to bed immediately after eating. And then we wake up and then we start eating again. So we are not even giving our body time to digest the food that we ate the previous night we are not giving break between our eating and sleeping patterns because ideally they say that you should not eat anything three hours prior to your bedtime okay which makes sense because uh, if you stop eating at 6 p.m which is the sunset time usually and you sleep at 9 p.m then it's like three hours prior to sleeping, you're not eating anything. So they twisted all this. And now they're saying, oh, do intermittent fasting and do this and that. And something as simple as go with the cycle of the sun and the moon and your body will be fine. They're not yeah. doing that. They want to make everything complicated. Right? Yeah, totally. <laughs> and, the, and the presence of electric light, yes. And Wi-Fi is not helping either, yeah? I remember whenever I felt the healthiest, the most vibrant in my life, it was like, for example, in Hawaii, we 
we lived at a community by a waterfall in a jungle in complete poverty like <laughs> I was you know I was there with the with baby Noah who was two years old running naked on the meadows jumping into waterfall we would throw babies boom into waterfalls like this you know 20 meter waterfall like this it was so crazy but we had no electricity there on that land 25 acres and as a result we would wake up with the sunrise and all the roosters in hawaii would go Kikiriki! right and some of them were at New York City time. So some of them would just wake up, wake us up like three in the morning, like they were off. So we we're like, come on, shut up, <laughs> go to sleep. <laughs> yes. But normally we we'll just wake up with the roosters, sunrise. Naturally, your, bo your body charges the battery, right? And then we would go to sleep, would say bye to each other when it was getting dark because we had no electricity. So we'd go sleep in cottages, in tents, you know, in huts with bamboo and so on. And the hormonal balance that I had there was so normal, natural, effortless, just guaranteed fitness, guaranteed emotional, mental stability. You didn't even have to work it. You would just go wake up at sunrise, go to sleep at sunset and so on. What's happening? recently in our world in in you know in the in the 3d world what's been happening is what's been happening is that people go surfing facebook until one in the morning yes or chatting on some dating apps <laughs> okay. and or, or now patriots and QAnons have been surfing through the telegrams right digging for the latest truth the latest truth the latest truth whatever and you know, it's time for us to basically dump it and return home, return to our nature. Yeah. Where the healing is balance, free food, free energy. Oh my gosh. Just Parul, go ahead because we cannot hear you. Yeah, I was looking at this video yesterday that came out, uh, watch the water, like uh, who knows what they're putting in our water, venoms and stuff like that. And I'm like, okay, Again, at the end of the day, it's all about intention. You know, have the right intention. Sun charge your water. I mean, yeah. some things come like, naturally to us, right? Uh, uh, now everything is easy here in the U.S. So we just open the water tap and drink the water. Uh, I remember in India, we buy the water, even if it's not tap water, and we boil it, then let it cool down, and then drink it. Because boiling kills most of the germs, right? Mm. like snake charging kills most of the germs it's disinfectant like what poison or what venom can exist you know when you're sun charging and boiling stuff yes. so you know it does take a little bit of effort but at the end of the day it is for your health and your benefit and eventually in fact this uh, gentleman hiramanek was saying that if you do it regularly for one year you might not have to then you might will probably just be doing it to recharge your batteries every now and then you will not have to even do it religiously wow you know and then if, if let's say it's uh, winter time and there is no sun uh, or you cannot go out because it's snowing you can always do it from the inside of your house uh, through the window if if, if, it, if there is no sun for a few days it's okay you know you don't really have to worry about it because your body is already charged from what you did like two days back or three days back. And then once it's back out there, you can do it again. You know, luckily we live in a state or a town where we have plenty of sun. So we wow. don't have to worry about it, but- um, Arun, uh, we are going to create retreats and eco villages in a place where we can see both sunrise and sunset. That's what we are going to do. And and if you think about it, you know, people go uh, to the beaches or to, to go to the mountains and they look at the sunrise and sunset. It's like a recreation activity, right? Oh, so we never thought of it, of anything more as giving some pleasure and stuff like that. But uh, why do we get that? Suntan, you know, white, white people want to yeah. be brown and, and brown people want to be white. 
Yes, but even like sunrise and sunset, it's considered an activity, fun activity. But yes. think about it, why? Because it gives us peace and calm. So if you do it every day, you will be in that joyous state every day. Nice. Wow. Fantastic. Yes. Wow. And if you if you do this sun gazing during the first hour of sunrise and the last hour of sunset, you will not even tan your skin because the UV light is so little during that time that it does not tan your skin. It's only during that major time periods when the UV is more that uh, and you're out in the sun that it tans your skin. Hmm. Parul, there, there was a video you showed me one time, I think, of Rishikesh where people gather together and they welcome the sun when yes. it's rising. Uh, can you show us the video? Do you remember this video? Uh, yeah, I mean, um, um, every morning, because Rishikesh is a place where they have the river Ganges, right? So the river Ganges, it starts, it's considered a holy river. It starts in Gangotri and then it flows obviously all across the country. So wherever we have, uh, you know, these, these are considered spiritual points. Wherever we have these spiritual points, they pray. Uh, they pray to basically the water, the river Ganges, and they do these prayers during sunrise and sunset. So it's like a proper ritual. Um, it's called, um, let me see if I can find it. It's called um, uh, basically Ganga Arti, that is what it's called. Let me find if I can find the video. Parul, can I do a question? Yes. Can, uh, okay, but normally uh, in the day, what uh, we have to put in our face or in our body for the sunlight, even though now I don't put nothing maybe some coconut oil i like to do i think so i think so yeah Anything only this natural you know uh, not filled with uh, chemicals okay not putting the sun the sunscreen just like and we no creams, did no nothing from the corporation you know yeah. also you know what else is good clay mask you you can use the earth yeah Wow. Amazing. I need to go see this. I need to go to Rishikesh one day. Yeah. So basically, uh, you know, they do this every morning and evening. I'm not sure if this is a morning video or an evening video. Mark Kelly delivered lower health insurance premiums. There you go. Sponsored by Premium by Insurance. <laughs> But somehow they started to, and, and it's they, because they of Mark Kelly. Allow us to Senator talk Kelly, these ads. keep delivering lower health care costs. I know. Really? That's so fun, I know. Check out this verb. See? Another ad. Oh my God. <laughs> it's in America like this? It's not like this here. was orange, red, yellow, and now it's pink is blue.
and then they also do uh, plants for the blood. And anybody can come and be there at the river banks? Yes, anybody can be there. There is no uh, limitation as long as you can manage the crowd. <laughs> you know, yeah. um, amazing. And people put flowers on the river? Yeah, so this is basically a sort of a way to uh, honor the river, honor the water. So uh, there is a boat and we put different flowers and light incense and stuff like that. And we just offer it to the river. And of course, uh, some people argue that it's creating a lot of river pollution uh, because uh, um, all these people, you know, offer um, all these flowers and everything to the river. But eventually, obviously, it flows away and... Uh, you know, goes in, in the river, it's kind of consumed in the river. So this is done like every morning and evening during uh, sunrise and sunset. So this is a ashram in Rishikesh. And this, uh, you know, the gentleman, the uh, Rishi that you were seeing, he's kind of one of the main Rishis from that ashram. Interesting. Wow. So my- he, so Farul, he does it every day? Every day, morning, and evening. Whoa. Sunrise and sunset. So it's a full job. It's a full-time job. Yeah, full-time full -time job. But also, Mila, imagine how nice, right? That the Yes, totally. You can just come out morning and evening yes. to, to, to do sun gazing together. I mean, how civilized, right? And I noticed that a lot of things in the Vedic tradition, <clears throat> it's... It's, you know, like people think it's religion, but it's actually keeping people healthy if they abide by it. Yes. Right? yes. So it keeps, like, for example, there's a religious commands to wash hands, mm -hmm. to, to shower, to, to, you know, to, to, to wash food, to whatever. And it's actually keeping such, it's keeping hygiene and balance. And like, for example, there are religious rituals. People think it's religion, but it's actually science. Because yes. it keeps you healthy. Right? So these, uh, these are those Naga Babas. <laughs> you know, I had shown one time to uh, Evita. Yeah, I would be so scared if I saw those guys in the night. <laughs> yeah, video may be inappropriate. Come on, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah right we should do like video might be scary for some some users why why why, why? because they they are they are pretending to be shiva right parol they are like look at this you see scary no wow they are getting uh, so they never wear any clothes uh, uh whether it's zero degrees or whether it's 120 degrees and it's cold right now it's very cold you can see the other people who are wearing clothes they are actually full body they are in jackets you see that the police yeah officer yeah yeah, yeah. so jackets. everybody's wearing a jacket and these guys are running naked yes oh my gosh and they're allowed to do that yeah yeah uh yeah of course Why women not? too I'm... women too or only guys mostly uh, mostly men oh my gosh this is like gay paradise. I don't want to say that, but you know. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Actually, and why do they do that? Because what? Because they are so charged from the sun? Uh, yeah, and then they have uh, kind of um, uh, given up on any material desires. So they're like, oh we don't God. even need clothes for our body. You know, why do we need anything that is made by uh, humans? We came into this world naked and we'll go naked kinds, you know? Yeah. Why, why do we need to keep ourselves uh, wow. you know, clothed? Yeah. Well, some people like food there for sure. So <laughs> it's interesting yeah. now, the, 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 the world of cultures. Wow. Actually, it says, you know, when it, um, it says in, the, in one of the forbidden gospels, 
in Nakamadi, they're saying, they're asking Jesus, Lord, when are you going to come back, right? And think about it this way, when Christ consciousness is going to come back, right? Yeah, when Christ is going to shine light into our soul again. And Jesus answers, when you guys stop being ashamed of your own body, yeah. because you will be okay being nude. And you know what it, what it actually means is when you actually see how beautiful your, your colors are, your rainbow, your chakras, right? When you're no longer clothed with, you know, with illusion, you know, your energy beings, beings of light. So this is sort of a spiritual uh, event that happens every uh, like four years and people from all over the country, they come uh, to bathe in, uh, in the Holy River, basically. It's, wow. it's very spiritual. A uh, lot of people come. Yeah. And then, of course, everybody else is wearing so many clothes, uh, but these Naga Babas, they're called Naga Babas. And they don't obviously wear any clothes or anything. Yeah, so, so people wake up early in the morning, like 5 a.m. or something. And uh, they take... Uh, and here they I carry a guru? They're driving a guru? I think so. I oh, think gosh, so. that's so funny. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. Wow, this is like a huge, huge procession. A lot of cars, no? Uh, sometimes, you know, they have uh, different uh, tents or camps uh, by the road. And each of uh, these gurus or whoever leaders, they have their own tents and people come there and it's free food and free lodging for anybody who wants to live there for the month, you know. So essentially this activity wow. comes up. Wow. So a lot of people just, uh, you know, go there. Um, let me see. I wanted to show you uh, something. Parul, this is the paganism? Paganism? Yes. So, no, uh, it's, this is called Sanatan Dharma. So basically, this is coming from uh, the original uh, real scriptures. Of uh -huh. Ah, okay. So, uh, um, it's called Sanatan Dharma. <laughs> this reminds me of, you know, for all the, the advertisements that are coming, it reminds me of when Michael says, World War III sponsored by Applebee's. <laughs> right? Because he saw on CNN, it's like, ta -da -da -da. Yeah. <laughs> so. so basically, you know, uh, in India, it's not very popular to go on the beach. Uh, it's not considered very... Um, what do you call it? Um, uh, I'm not getting the right word. Uh, decent? Decent, yes. Very mm -hmm. decent to go on mm -hmm. the beach and, uh, you know, in a bikini and stuff. But this Ganga, because it's considered the holy river, you know, most of the people come here. And the reason they come here is to get rid of their sins. Because it's believed that if you take a bath or take a dip in this holy river, then all you get rid of all your sins. And the water that you see, this is brown. Uh, the reason is this, uh, this video, I'm not sure if, if this is the correct date, but this is probably done after uh, the rainfall. So after the first rainfall, a lot of mud comes down yeah. from the Himalayas and the water becomes like, you know, muddy. Mm -hmm. But people don't mind it because it's considered so spiritual that they just still go and uh, take like a dip in this holy river and they come especially like the po for poor people it's also sort of a recreation it's their vacation it's a way of you know uh, them feeling you know really but it uh, function huh yeah many, millions of people are doing this oh it is right? so crowded it's difficult it's like head to head like so, uh, do they have result that, uh, or is something that if I believe? Mila, it is okay. Mila, we are talking, Parul is showing us the culture, right? Yes. The culture has had two things, like all cultures in the world have had, yeah, yeah. Religion, have had religion. Yes. Right? And true spirituality, which is science, right? 
and you know you can look at you you can look at any scripture if you take it literally you have religion if you take it metaphorically you will have science for example ganga the river of life could be the the river coming from the the cerebral fluid that is flowing in the brain going down right and goes from the mountains there are mountains in the brain clearly <laughs> like streams right and it flows down we call it chrism oil christ oil you know it's just a matter of different language but i'm interested i've been always interested in learning the language of other cultures because like for example we can learn you know what vedas are saying like vedas are saying for example that shiva lord shiva from what i learned recently is the god above all other gods right correct parul uh, yeah, he is considered like the god of destruction basically right yeah so, but he's also superior god right uh, mm -hmm. yeah brahma vishnu and shiva so these three mm -hmm. uh, represent life death and birth and all of them are considered like kind of equal i would think mm -hmm. interesting yeah. yeah and if you look at the holy trinity in the bible if you look at christ the meaning of christ which is royalty king right a truth joy love and then you look at krishna which is also king uh, uh, royalty right monarchy isn't it uh, joy love and so on you you look at all of these things you compare it is basically the same truth being spoken but you you need to look at it metaphorically as science coded science you know all righty so shall we wrap up i can we cannot hear you all right thank you so much for joining and i see uh, you know a doll there anyway thank so thank you so much for joining thank you, and Karul. this has been fascinating thank you so much thank you for giving me this opportunity to share i hope you are able to uh, get used to this practice and incorporate sun gazing in your daily life yeah i'm blown i'm just blown out of my mind right now it's i like, will try it for I am, sure i am I'm like, can you imagine? It's like so many winters, so many summers, so many days, sunrises, sunsets, and I never knew about this. Yeah. Yes, exactly. And you know, uh, Amila, the way I look at it, it's only for 10 seconds. Even if at 10 seconds, if you, if you wake up at, let's say, a little bit late and you're looking at the sun, it's not the end of the world, right? So uh, I would, I don't stress myself like, hey, I have to wake up at 6 a.m. and do it because, you know, life can get busy and difficult with children, right? And we have to take care of them. So, like today I wanted to wake up, but then my daughter also woke up. So I, I had to serve her breakfast. But after they left for school, after they were settled, I did it. I'm like, okay, if I'm not able to do it for 15 minutes because it's hot, I can still do it for five minutes. But at least, you know, somehow I get it incorporated into my daytime. Hmm. So, and in the night time you do candle meditation candle meditation i'm trying to do it like regularly but again you know sometimes i get so tired i i look at the candle and then i'm like oh i'm drifting to sleep <laughs> okay <laughs> the, the to-do list on the new earth take off take off take off the to-do play, play music to water <laughs> sun gazing candle meditation to -do -do -do. Listen to Michael, listen to Linda, yes. charge water, make juice, drink juice. juice. Like, oh, I need to feed the kids. <laughs> Mama, I'm hungry. Hold on a second. We are playing music to Walter right now. I know sometimes I feel I should just go and stay in the cave for one month, do whatever I want to do, and then. My come God, back. Parul, I love you. I think you will say. <laughs> you know galactics watching us must be cracking up they must be like i mean earth must be a comedy for the aliens right now it must be so funny what's going on here it must be it must be floored like look at them <laughs> we just added another thing on their plate <laughs> 
right? We just added another stuff. Oh, let's show them this video. <laughs> oh, yeah, more, yeah. And then, one uh, more thing. <laughs> yeah, and then you, yesterday you were like, okay, you know, you sent me a meditation. Remember in the morning, do this meditation. <laughs> and then, but before that, uh, but also do that uh, uh, Neil Goddard manifestation thing. And then I'm like, okay, if you have to do both at the same time, what do I do first? You know, this meditation or that manifestation? <laughs> One year here, another year here, you know, so different things, so different <laughs> Oh my God. And then sometimes, you know, um, when I look at these videos, when I was looking at these videos uh, about healthy eating, they are like, do this thing first thing in the morning on empty stomach and then eat this medication on an end. And I'm like, okay, but if I do the first thing, then my stomach is not empty. So how do I do the second thing? Because now the stomach is full. So I'm like, how do I make my stomach empty for eating, for drinking that another juice? Because I already drank that first juice. So it's so <laughs> So I'm like, now my stomach is not wait, empty, so I cannot wait, drink. I have only stomach. one stomach. Wait, what? <laughs> oh, God, so difficult. Oh, God. Do oh. this thing first thing in the morning, you know, after you wake up to manifest money. And I'm like, oh, oh. there is so many of those things first thing, first thing in the morning. So many first thing in the morning. Oh, my God, do this before you go to sleep. Right? And I'm like, so many things. And then I'm like, okay, the last thing and the first thing that I do is use my bathroom so I could sleep well and then, you know, start my day well. <laughs> so, <laughs> because if I do any other thing, then <laughs> yeah, I will not be able to do anything else. So it's so oh God. many things on my plate. Oh gosh, you know, we're so funny. You know, at the end, at the end, if I can just make one reflection here because it just came to me and I wanted to record it for other friends who are not able to join us today. Yes. <clears throat> you know, you remember when we were showing the, um, the, there was this how to achieve a goal, right? Yeah, from, from the science that we need to, we can go to-do list forever. <laughs> And maybe one day, one day, one day this will happen, yes? One day we are going, to, we will ascend. One day we're going to have a DNA activated. One day we'll have Christ consciousness. We will be good enough, worthy enough. One day we'll enter new earth, okay? That's just not the way it works in, in terms of um, consciousness because consciousness does not have time, does not have future, does not have yesterday, right? Yesterday is the same day like today. It's just that today is called Wednesday and yesterday it, it had the name of Tuesday. There is no tomorrow. Tomorrow is another today. It's just it's going, it's going to be called Thursday because somebody named the days. Can you imagine this? If you talk with animals, animals don't have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, or, or, okay, Wednesday, Friday, what am I saying? But you know, you see, if you, if you look at animals, they don't have that, that thing of in the future, right? And animals are very busy feeling. The only species on earth that is not feeling, but thinking is human being. Yeah? And what we need to do is we need to be in the, instead of going to do that one day we're going to ascend, we need to be on the end state and look towards the back and we can say, I have always been an ascended master. I have always been ascended. I am an ascended being and hold that frequency. And eventually it's going to manifest through our body, through the density of our body, right? Eventually our body is going to catch up. But that's, I feel Linda also says that, guys, stop thinking that one day you will ascend. You never fell from grace. You were never rejected by the source. You were never separated from the source. Yeah, you never fell from grace. So chill, yeah? You're, you guys are here from the future. That's the way she puts it. And you have ascended already. 
So please just hold the frequency, be, be busy in busy yourself in the embodiment of being ascended. Yes, so language yourself differently. You're, I'm not human, I'm, on, I'm not on the path of ascension, right? I know most people will think that way, but you can actually language yourself, use your words and your thoughts to claim that, to, to affirm that it, it has happened. And then it shall be so, right? And, and you will get the feeling of how it is when it has happened and believing. Yeah, makes sense? Quantum jumping. We are quantum jumping. And yes, yesterday, after the beautiful day in 12th, on April 12th, we saw this message from Ashtar Command. Congratulations, friends. You entered the fifth dimension and so on. We cried, like I cried, like, oh my gosh. Well, what a confirmation. I'm going to send it to you, Farol. But thank you. I haven't seen it yet. Thank you. <laughs> so beautiful. So beautiful. You, this is one more video for you. <laughs> one more thing on that. <laughs> yeah, she, she she keeps sharing oh, so many things. And I'm like, oh my God, you know, the video, the movie that you asked me to watch six months before, earlier, I haven't even seen that movie. And now I have to see all this. <laughs> And all day that plays on my oh, home no. is Peppa Pig, Peppa Pig. <laughs> from, the ba from the baby, right? Yeah, Peppa Pig, you know. All day long, Peppa Pig is playing. Oh, so we are advanced. We use UFO. UFO. <laughs> now, it's not uh, uh, Peppa Pig anymore. It's UFO. So. <laughs> <laughs> you guys upgraded, yes. <laughs> and uh, you wow. wouldn't believe their uh, persistence. I mean, there is on one CD that I play in the car, Peppa Pig CD. It's the same CD, okay? And that has been playing nonstop in my car for the last one year. So I know all the dialogues, what is coming next. And my daughter never gets bored, you know? She's like, no, I want to watch that CD, Peppa Pig CD. She's going on a vacation. And I'm like, oh God, don't you get bored? It's the same repetition every day. The mantra. <laughs> I know. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you so much, Parul. Thank you, Mila. And greetings, friends. I hope we trust you guys are having so much fun. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Priceless knowledge. Just think about how much how much money we're going to save right now. How much more energy and how much more bliss. Thank you so much. Such a blessing. Um, uh, if you see that video by um, Hira Manek, he also talks about, he goes into details and he talks about how uh, this can also heal cancer and stuff like that. Because at the end of the day, it's only infrared light that heals, you know, when we are talking about light and immunotherapy. Uh, so that's, wow. he gives the details and he talks about science also about it. Wow. Beautiful. All righty, thank you so much, Farol. Thank you. Oh, oh, uh, so let's uh, let's disconnect and then we reconnect. Okay.